surface, things we need to care about when we choose what to paint on. Basically, the, the properties that matter most, there's two categories, textured versus smooth, and then we have absorbent versus non-absorbent. If you start thinking about your painting surfaces through this lens, it's going to make everything way, way simpler. So with the texture versus smooth, this has a lot to do with temperament. If you like to put on very heavy paint and really sculpt and be a little bolder with your paint application, it's very likely that smooth surfaces are going to feel annoying and that you're going to want that tooth of the canvas or of the paper to grab hold of your paint and provide some kind of contra to the way that you're naturally moving your hand. Conversely, if you find that you're a very delicate painter and you like to apply things very finely and very smoothly, then for your temperament, maybe smooth texture is actually going to be more preferable. In the difference between textured and smooth, I testify that I use both. I like both. It depends on my mood. I recommend to you guys to try both, see what kind of effects it leads you to create. And with time and with experience, you're going to know how to develop your preferences and say, oh, for these kinds of sketches, I prefer textured paper. For these kinds of sketches, I prefer smooth. Property number two is absorbent versus non-absorbent. For short studies, that are kind of like a la prima or one day or two day or something like that, I like a non-absorbent surface because I prefer to paint it once as I intended and then to have very, very little absorbency because the absorbency is obviously going to change the appearance of the painting. If my surface is drinking up my paint, then it gets in the way of making quick sketches that look the way you intended them to look. I've been recently having the the issue with some of my panels that I would paint something during a lesson or during a demo and I really like how it looks and then I wake up the next day and I'm like what happened to the colors they're totally different and that is a result of an absorbent surface that kind of pulls in part of the paint and pulls in the medium the binder of the paint and then that ends up looking really different so for quick sketches I really prefer non-absorbent surfaces but for prolonged projects this absorbency is extremely useful because if you're going to work on a painting that has layers over layers over layers over layers then it's super useful to kind of come at the painting the next day and see that it's just a little bit flatter, dries a little bit faster, and just generally creates a much more inviting surface to come back into. You know, sometimes when you do an a la prima, you really slap on a lot of paint. It's very textured. It creates a lot of ridges. And if you try to get back into it, even once it's dry, it's just hostile territory. Now, I know that there are people who would use absorbent surfaces for both or non-absorbent surfaces for both. And that's okay. Uh, but that's just my personal take on it. Now, that said, what are the different options? So we have, broadly speaking, fabrics, which is like canvas, linen, we have paper, and we have wood. Now, these Surfaces on their own don't really determine whether or not they're absorbent or not, but they definitely determine the texture, right? So canvas will have the texture of the canvas. So there is like canvases that are very, very rough and canvases that are very, very, very fine. So basically in the canvas, you can get both smooth and textured. In paper, same thing goes. You get cold press paper, which is very like speckly and textured and, and fun to work on. And then you have hot press paper, which is perfectly smooth. So for that one as well, you can get both textured and smooth. And then the degree of absorbency is determined by the layer that is applied on top of the surface itself. Pardon the interruption. Hope you're enjoying this video. And if you are, please take a moment to like it and to subscribe to my channel to make sure you don't miss any of my upcoming cool stuff. And if you want to support my mission of making art education affordable and accessible, please consider joining my Patreon through the link in the description below. You'll have access to live lessons, full recorded workshops, Q&As, and much, much more. And you can sign up today for as little as $2. Thanks in advance for the support. Now back to the action. So broadly, there are two categories of materials that you can use to prepare surfaces for painting. One material is called sizing, which is just sealing the canvas, but not adding any degree of absorbency. And the other category is called ground, where you both seal the surface and add a degree of absorbency. So the most common ground that is sold to any art student is gesso. 
So gesso is a very familiar material, which is basically, it has a sealing agent, which is an acrylic binder like PVA. And then it has an absorbency agent, which is kind of like a plaster. Back in the day, traditionally, they, they also used uh, marble dust, which is really cool. But it's some kind of powder that has absorbency properties. So when you put gesso on canvas or you put gesso on paper or you put gesso on wood, you've created a surface that is absorbent and contains the texture on which you applied it to, plus the texture that was created with the gesso itself, because you can create texture with the gesso when you apply it with a brush or try to minimize that texture by applying it with a spatula or something like that. And the other category, which is the sizing category, just doesn't contain any absorbent agent. So my preferred sizing agent is shellac. Shellac is a, an organic resin, which I really love. Here's how it looks like when it's not um, diluted. So it's these kinds of flakes. It's a resin that's uh, secreted by insects. And I dilute it with denatured alcohol to create a liquid. And then you can apply it to wood or to paper to basically seal them, protect them from the oil. And uh, that makes for a really great non-absorbent surface. This is something that I love to do for my quick sketches so that I can wake up the next day and the colors are as I left them. So I am a huge fan of uh, putting shellac on, on surfaces in that way. And, and, and shellac is just my personal preference, but there are other kind of sides agents out there that would seal your canvas or seal your paper, but won't add any absorbency. So that depends on the kind of project that you want to do. Do not use shellac on fabric. It will not work on fabric. For fabric, there are other options that work better, uh, but I don't usually do it on canvas. So I don't want to recommend one over the other because when I'm working on fabric, which is rarely, I prefer it to be absorbent. That's just the circumstances of how my practice has evolved. That's that. One more thing about painting surfaces. Once you've prepared your surface and you've decided whether or not you want it smooth or textured and whether or not you want it absorbent or not absorbent, the last thing you need to do is you need to stain your canvas, which is what we call an imprimatura. Just get rid of the white. You want your painting surfaces before you start painting to be some kind of middle value because it helps so much with your ability to judge color. So this painting here behind me is a pretty good example. You see, it's it's just a medium kind of gray. And what's good about it is you mix a light color, you put it on, it looks light. You mix a dark color, you put it on, it looks dark. Ta-da! We love it, right? When you work on a white canvas, every color you put on is gonna look dark because our perception of color is relational. And in relation to the factory white of the canvas, every other color is gonna look dark. So people who work on white canvases just end up feeling like their colors are too dark and then they brighten them up and lighten them up and lighten them up. And then lo and behold, once they cover the entire surface, it all just looks way too light. So decide on the kind of uh, surface that you want to work on and stain it.